interesting heavyweight fight taking place on April 12th between former heavyweight title challenger Eddie Chambers and Brixton boy Ian Lewison. And he's from my neck of the woods, but I'm not going to be biased. I base my predictions and my ana analysis on who I think is going to win and not who I want to win. So there's definitely no bias here, but yeah, Ian Lewis and is from my neck of the woods. So it's an interesting fight. I want to know if this fight is going to be over six, eight or 10 rounds. If it's a 10 rounder, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to take Eddie Chambers to win the fight. I think he's way too seasoned, way too slick and experienced for Ian Lewison over a 10 round distance. But if it's a shorter fight, if it's six or eight rounds, it could be interesting. Ian Lewison is built like a tank. The guy is very thickly set, natural heavyweight, very powerful. He's around 6'1", very strong guy. But I just, from a skill, skill perspective, I just wonder if this fight has come a little bit too early for Ian Lewison. Again, especially if it's a 10 rounder. If it's a six or eight rounder, Ian Lewison with his strength and his aggression he might be able to come forward and either stop Eddie Chambers or at least get Eddie Chambers intimidated whereby he could maybe rough him up and out-hustle him over a six-round distance to get to get a decision. So, yeah, I, I, I want to find out how long the fight is scheduled for, uh, six, eight, or ten rounds. Ian Lewis, and for those of you, uh, those of you who ain't seen him, again, he's, a, he's around 6'1", six, 6'2", medium-sized heavyweight by today's standards, very thickly set. Um, what, one thing about Ian is that he hasn't always been the best trainer. He has come in overweight for most of his professional career. So he, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of condition he's in now because he's switched trainers. He's now with Don Charles. And Don Charles has obviously managed to get Derek Chisora back down in weight again. So it'd be interesting to see if he can do the same with Ian Lewison and you know get his weight correct. Because that way he'll have a bit more foot speed to be able to close Eddie Chambers down and make it his fight. Because in a boxing match, he ain't going to beat Eddie Chambers. Eddie Chambers way too experienced. He's been in there with uh, Klitschko, obviously. He beat people like former heavyweight champion Sam Peter. He beat uh, Alexander Dimitrenko. Uh, he's been in there with loads of different fighters. He's obviously at the moment uh, signed to... The Fury camp. He's with the Furies now. He's always sparring with Tyson Fury. He's fought many, many people. Okay, he fought Thomas Adamek. That's another one. He's literally fought a lot of the best guys in the division. And he's been around for a long time. He's vastly experienced. Some people say that Eddie Chambers is maybe on the slide a little bit. He's a bit shop-worn. And I think that's a fair comment. He might be shop-worn. I don't know. It's hard to judge it on his last few fights because he lost to Vladimir Klitschko like everyone else, so that doesn't necessarily mean you're shop-worn because you lose to Vladimir Klitschko. Then he fought Derek Rossi in a rematch, and sub he's, that's actually a person who beat Ian Lewison in the prize fighter tournament, although it was a pretty controversial decision. A lot of people felt like Ian Lewison won that fight, but nonetheless, that is one of their common opponents. He beat, and Eddie Chambers has beat him twice, so he beat him for the second time after the Vladimir fight, and then he fought Thomas Adamek, and I don't consider the Adamek fight an indication that Eddie Chambers is on the slide because Eddie Chambers injured himself. He injured, I believe it was his left arm in the Adamek fight. Pretty early, pretty early on, I think it was in the first or second round, he injured his left arm. He literally didn't even use it at all. It's not like the Vitali fight, the Vitali against uh, Chisora, where they say he injured his left arm, but he kept throwing left jabs. It's not like that. And it's not like the Hellenius fight where, oh, they say Hellenius injured his arm against Chisora, but he kept on throwing it all night. No. If you watch Eddie Chambers against Adamek, he injures his left arm and he literally doesn't throw it hardly at all for the entire fight. And despite that, it was a very close fight, which a lot of people felt Eddie Chambers won. So if you can have a very close fight with Thomas Adamek with one arm, then I don't think that's an indication that Eddie Chambers is on the slide. Then he fought a guy called Fabiso Mchunu, who's a South African Southpaw cruiserweight. The guy's only about five feet, seven or five, eight. Tremendous athlete, very quick on his feet, very quick hands, very slick and awkward and difficult to catch. So he's 
the total antithesis of Ian Lewison. You know, he did outbox Eddie Chambers pretty soundly, to be fair. But, you know, his styles make fights and Machunu is nothing like uh, Ian Lewison. Totally different, completely different style, completely different attributes, much faster than Ian Lewis and he's a southpaw, much shorter. So it's very awkward for Eddie Chambers having to fight a short guy when he's used to fighting big tall guys. Much faster than Eddie's been used to, a southpaw slick, boxing on the back foot. He basically did to Eddie Chambers what Eddie Chambers does to a lot of big heavyweights. He outslicked him. But if you look at Eddie Chambers' resume, the closest opponent in terms of style and attributes to Ian Lewison that he's fought before was Sam Peter and I'll leave a link in the description below for you could for you to go and watch Eddie Chambers against Sam Peter because then you might have an indication a pretty good indication of how Eddie Chambers is going to fight Ian Lewison and he beat Sam Peter comprehensively uh, one of the judges apparently gave it a draw but that was ridiculous because one of the other judges had it 98 I believe it was 98 or 99 to 91. I think it was 99 to 91 in favor of Eddie Chambers. So they had him winning nine out of the 10 rounds. So yeah, and, and that's pretty similar to how, how I saw it. You go watch the fight for yourself and you tell me what you think. But Eddie, but Sam Peter was a big, strong guy, uh, very similar build and height and very similar attributes to Ian Lewis. And Eddie Chambers handled him with relative ease. Okay. The only thing I would say is that Ian Lewison is probably fresher and more hungry than Sam Peter was at the time when Eddie Chambers fought him. When Eddie Chambers fought Sam Peter, Sam Peter was a bit lethargic. He wasn't the Sam Peter that fought Vladimir Klitschko for the first time several years earlier. Okay, and that's more like Ian Lewison. If you if you watch Sam Peter in the first uh, Vladimir Klitschko fight, that's kind of like Ian Lewison. He's full of energy. He's a very powerful, burly guy. And he's going to come forward and he's going to give you everything he has. Yeah, that's Ian Lewis for you. Very big, strong, powerful guy. So if Eddie Chambers has slipped and he's not quite as sharp as he was, then there is the possibility that he, he could be overwhelmed and tagged with one of Lewis's big shots and taken out of the fight and knocked out. We saw Vladimir Klitschko knock him out cold. And Ian Lewis, and I'm not sure if he's got Klitschko power, but he's certainly a very powerful man. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, uh, I've seen him firsthand. Right? <laughs> Ian Lewis, he's very powerful. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting fight, but I'm going to reserve judgment in terms of making a prediction until I find out how many rounds the fight is scheduled for. Six, eight, or ten rounds. If it's a t but if it is a ten-rounder, I'm going to take Eddie Chambers to win the fight on points. Yeah, I think he's got too much savvy, too much slickness for Ian Lewis. And, but a, another factor as well is I want to see what kind of weight Ian Lewis is coming in at now since he's been with Don Charles. Since he's, you know, you know, if he's dropped a significant amount of weight, that may add a significant amount of speed and mobility to him, whereby he'll be able to catch up with Eddie Chambers a lot quicker and close him down. So that's another thing to take into consideration. But I'll make a prediction maybe next week when I found out a little bit more information. So yeah, drop your comments below if you know anything about these two fighters and let me know how you feel about it. This is Hatman, I'm out.